right then. Welcome, ladies, uh, to the panel this morning. And as you can see, I've got the panel behind me as well. Now, we are always interested in health and hygiene because it's high on people's agenda. And yesterday, the BBC reported that sugar and salt should be taxed in products like vegetables prescribed by the NHS in the UK. Now, we might come away from the doctor with a cabbage, but we have some really interesting questions this morning from Living Stones Church on the Internet. Now, we will be having somebody else join us on our panel shortly, but let me come to you first, Lydia, if I may. Um, and this is the question for you. We all need healing in some way, especially those who think they don't need it. I mean, is that true even with people who are healthy? What is your take on that, please, Lydia? Um, yeah, I, I kind of sat with this question and yeah. I think we all need healing. We all need that healing, whether it's physical healing, spiritual healing, psychological healing. I think when we kind of don't think we don't, I don't need anything. I'm fine. I'm perfect. I, I believe that's when we'll fall flat on our face. And a man that thinks he knows everything knows nothing at all, my belief. And I just think you know, people, everybody needs to be aware of the kind of healing that they need, whether it be, like I said, spiritual, physical. And I think when we kind of walk around like, no, I'm fine, I'm perfect, that's when we can kind of get caught out. So, um, yeah, that that's my kind of take on it, that I do believe everybody needs healing. Maybe it's a different kind of healing. It may not be a physical healing, but it's a spiritual healing or a psychological healing. But we're all... I think we're all in need of healing at some point and it's about humbling ourselves and realizing actually you know stilling ourselves humbling ourselves and stilling ourselves to actually listen rather than talk listen more because be still and know that i'm god that for me just speaks volumes for what you're just asking me so yeah and hannah do you have anything to add to that at all um well lydia said we all need healing at some point and um I agree with that. I think it's where a person is in their walk with the Lord. So he stretches us and grows us. Um, and he does it at a pace that's right for us individually. We know that we're in a process of being transformed and more Christ-like. So maybe when the Lord identifies an area for us to work on, there might be some healing that needs to take place as part of that process, things from our past. Um, I don't think we need healing all of the time, unless you're my eight-year-old who's extremely clumsy, so she does need healing all the time. But I do think there are definitely times in our Christian walk where we may need to receive a healing to be able to grow, deepen and develop in the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And coming back to you then, Lydia, why do you think God heals some people and not other people? Why do you think that is? Well, I've got personal experience with that. Um, I have a journey with multiple sclerosis. Yes. And I've actually said, you know, why God aren't I healed yet? Why completely? I have to be constantly like looking at what I eat, looking at how I'm exercising. But I realized, I mean, God led me to the scripture. It's 2 Corinthians 12, um, nine and ten which is but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness for when i am weak then i am strong so i relate so much to paul in the bible and the thorn in his flesh like it, it hasn't been totally taken away from me yet but when i when i'm reliant on god he gives me a different kind of strength i may not be physically completely healed but he's injecting me with a spiritual strength so then it guides me then to a different form of okay remain open-minded remain with your eyes open remain with spiritual looking spiritually and then i'll lead you i will continue to lead you and then that leads me on then to what i was led to with pray without ceasing um with my 
with, with burnt my my because I've been seven years now with multiple sclerosis, right. and I've had two lots of medication thrown at me, and I just didn't have a peace over either of those medication, and I just prayed and I just said, God, if you're in this, then lead me. If you want me to take medication, I will take it, but if not lead me to an alternative way and I just prayed without ceasing it's not a case of getting on my knees and constantly praying it's just having that communication with God that constant walk I think that that is very apt and um he led me he, he I believe he told me to say no to the conventional medication and he led me to a thing called fasting which you all know about fasting is just amazing spiritually but it's also amazing physically as well it resets a lot of what's going on in your brain and um, so yeah that's that's where I'm at and um, my journey is I think the most important thing is just remaining pray without ceasing we need to remain just listening and it should be a two-way we wouldn't dream of picking up a phone and going blah 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 and then slamming down the phone we, we should also listen and that's the, the journey that God's had me on with this multiple sclerosis so why am I healed? I'm kind of thankful in a way that I'm not completely healed because it's made me more reliant on God. Sorry if I've, I've come around the reekin to answer that question, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. So, have you got anything you want to share about that at all, Hannah, to add to that? Um, I think Lydia summed it up perfectly, really. That's definitely the right attitude to have. I have ongoing issues with my back and I've had surgery at times and different things, but I do have to be careful. Um, but it's about just keep him like she said open to receiving it and there'll be different reasons for different people as to as to why they have their healing and, and why not um lots of different reasons but i think for for christian believers we know that we will receive a healing whether it's this side of heaven or the other and it's just keeping that attitude that lydia talks about there um i don't think it's our job to defend god to people who might ask about it you know he can do that for himself um, but we're, as people who are walking with people who haven't received their healing, we're called to pray, to love, to encourage and help and support someone who's in need of healing, obviously to make sure they're not doing anything harm or harmful or destructive over their body that's causing that or blocking a healing and sensitively making sure they know the truth of scripture like Lydia was quoting it and applying over her life. And that's really important that we speak life and healing over ourselves and just believe that Jesus paid the price and are willing to receive it. But like she said, just remaining in that attitude of, of opening and listening and, and praying without ceasing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a, a good answer, actually. We can't see Heather at the moment. We're hoping that she'll be able to join us shortly. And uh, I'm here. We can't see I'm you at here. the moment, Heather. Um, I'm going to come to you in a minute, um, Heather, with a question for you uh, when we can actually see you. Um, so I'm going to go back and ask another question question to Hannah now so Hannah um, there are people out there who say look I prayed for someone to get healed but it never actually come about how do you answer a question like that yes unfortunately I I too know that feeling oh too well and it's something I've grappled with over the years and um, first of all you know if anyone did send that in because they're personally going through that and I'm sorry to hear that and I'm sending yes. lots of love to you yes. um, what I'm probably not going to be able to do is give you any definitive answer you might want um, but I can give you some thoughts and insights around that that I've sort of got gathered myself over the years and um, firstly what we mustn't do is blame ourselves in any way I went through, you know, did I pray long enough, hard enough? Should I have fasted more? Did I speak out the right words? Did I show unbelief or lack of faith? And I think we can tie ourselves up in guilt and condemnation, which the enemy just loves. Um, especially if we come to the conclusion, right, well, I can't pray for anyone else ever again for healing because of that. And, you know, as I was sort of praying and preparing for this session, I actually felt that maybe someone would be watching who can identify with that. And what I've just said is resonating for them. And I just want to tell you, you need to get rid of that burden. You need to give it to the Lord. Let his love heal your pain. You're not to blame in any way. It's not your fault. And you need to be released from that bondage of pain and lies right now in Jesus' name. When I was really struggling with various people in my life, not receiving their healing when I prayed for them, a book that really helped me was um, Pete Gregg's book, God on Mute. And it gives lots of reasons as to why our prayers don't get answered or answered the way we want them to. 
And ultimately it's between that person and the Lord. We're called to pray and maybe fast for them in faith and belief and we can encourage them and raise faith in them sensitively and stand with them. But the responsibility for their healing doesn't rest on our shoulders. And we may feel angry and confused and sad and that's okay as long as we take it all to the Lord and let him work through it with us. And um, praying for someone else after that might be difficult. I've found it very challenging, but I just know it's what we're called to do. So I do it. And I can tell you, I've seen times when I have prayed for people and they have been healed. And again, that's not down to me, that's on God. So I thank and praise him for it. So it's important in faith and in love for people to keep on praying on their behalf. And any questions we don't have answered here, yeah. And I don't say this lightly because it's a frustrating answer sometimes, but they will be answered in heaven. Yes. So don't let that occasion stop you. Give your hurts and your questions to God. He knows, he gets it, he cares, and he's in it with you and that person. Yes, yes. Lydia, have you got any thoughts on that? I'm in just total agreement with what Heather was just saying. Um, Hannah, Hannah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, just basically like... The enemy will throw so many negative thoughts at us. And I, I know, because I'm, I'm with you, Hannah, with the, oh, yes. you know, you're not healed, you're sick, you're always gonna be sick, and that's the way it's gonna be. Get behind me, Satan, because I serve and follow and worship a king that is greater yes. than you. And that's the thing, we, we all need to remain in Christ with that, you know, that God will show us a way, he will show us, I do believe when, we go into him and he comes into us he he'll lead us he leads us so that's yeah i'm in agreement with you hannah Hopefully. amen yeah that's really good answers actually so thank you ladies